We had earlier looked at uh, demographic health surveys, but the basis of why surveys are conducted is because uh, there is need for data. And, and the need for data is uh, uh, as a result of trying to understand your population uh, in terms of its demography, in terms of its uh, uh, socioeconomic uh, health, and, and, and other characteristics that the population has. And we also very well know that uh, the need for data is in order to make our decisions, but also policies uh, in, in, in terms of trying to uh, uh, govern uh, populations. And mostly uh, for those in the health, in, in the health sector, uh, the need for data is, main, is, is most importantly for uh, prevention of diseases, for uh, curative measures, but also some therapeutic measures. So that is why population data is very key. And today we want to look at population data in, uh, in, 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 in brief so that we understand the, uh, the, the, the gist uh, when we're talking about population data. And we're going to look at the sources of population data and the sources of errors in population data for today. Then tomorrow we, can, we shall be able to state the ways of improving population data quality and some of the methods of presenting population data. So uh, briefly, population data refers to demographic information about a specific group providing insights into its characteristics and dynamics. And some of these characteristics are what we have always known uh, that include uh, the demographic characteristics such as age, uh, education level, uh, household size, uh, the, the, the gender or the sex of a household or household members, uh, places of residence, but also other characteristics that might be uh, biomarkers such as uh, uh, someone's uh, HIV status, uh, an individual's uh, blood, blood pressure levels, uh, we would be looking at malnutrition among under fives in terms of stuntedness, uh, wasting, and so forth. So those are some of the characteristics. But also looking at dynamics, we want to understand how uh, uh, the populations interact. For example, we want to understand uh, how places of residence uh, might influence a certain behavior. Uh, probably a health behavior or probably uh, uh, a, an economic uh, seeking behavior. For example, uh, you may not, uh, in, a, in a predominantly uh, Christian area, you may not take uh, products that are, uh, are not, uh, are not, uh, that, that are not preferred in, uh, in, in Christian areas, uh, in, 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 in those Muslim areas. So you, you, you have to understand the characteristics of a particular population, even in terms of business, you cannot take Korans where the place is predominantly uh, Christian. So likewise, food products, uh, medicine, and, and so forth, you may not take uh, a, a modern family planning method uh, to, to, to a, a Catholic church uh, basis, because uh, the, the teachings vary uh, we, uh, and, but also the practices vary uh, with, with what you would be taking. So those are some of the importances of uh, understanding population data and the dynamics in which individuals live. So it is also crucial for informed decision making, policy formulation and resource allocation in various fields. You are able to understand uh, which population needs uh, which kind of intervention. So uh, in a population, where in, in, in an area or population where uh, the population has women who are above the age of 49 uh, with the highest number, it will be very absurd that you take their family planning uh, services because these are people who are away from the reproductive age. So it, it helps you make decisions uh, that are from an informed point of view. And you can only take such kind of services where need be. And therefore, you as well can do what they call resource allocation. And uh, you, you're able to realize probably which region 
has more elderly people, and then you can have a social protection fund uh, so that you can uh, help such elderly uh, persons to survive in the communities that they live in. So uh, there is what they call population data measurement. Uh, we want to uh, measure uh, the, 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 the data, or we want to understand uh, what the population is in terms of its dynamics and uh, in terms of its characteristics. So how do we measure the population? Uh, how do we measure the characteristics and so forth? So uh, population data uh, can be measured through numerical uh, or categorical measurements or observations. And when we're talking about numerical population data, we're looking at the number. Well, you know, numerical uh, comes from the word number, numbers, therefore we are, we are dealing with figures here. And therefore we can be looking at uh, numerical data such as the number of people living in a certain country, uh, the region or a city. So say uh, in, in looking at numbers, we're looking at uh, uh, the number of women, the number of children, the number of uh, under fives, the number of uh, infants, we're looking at the number of PWDs. We're looking at the number of persons living with uh, HIV. Uh, we're looking at persons who are elderly. We're looking at teenagers. So that is how numerical uh, data can be aggregated. So you you might also be have a, another numerical aspect is the the looking at uh, the average age income or education level of a population you want to look at the frequency or distribution of certain health conditions for example you want to understand uh, how diabetes is uh, uh, distributed across uh, uh, a certain population for example you will take working class or individuals who are working in the government public service and you want to understand uh, the health living conditions among such people most times you realize that diabetes and uh, these other uh, uh, what we call non-communicable diseases or what they call diseases of the rich uh, might be uh, predominantly among those who are doing some uh, work or who earn probably uh, uh, a monthly salary. Uh, for, for, or you might even realize that there are people who are educated or living in, uh, in urban settings. So those are some of the numerical measures through which uh, we can measure uh, the characteristics of the population. The, the, you, you can use the central tendencies uh, using mode, the median or the mean of a numerical variable measured for a population. And uh, you can be able to understand uh, the population numerically. But also there is what we call the categorical population data. And this is the percentage of people who identify with a certain gender, ethnicity, or religion. So, so in a, when we, when you're looking at categorical political uh, population data, you're only looking at a specific uh, at a specific uh, category or group of people. For example, you're looking at females only. Uh, you're looking at men. Uh, you're looking at people of this particular tribe. You're looking at people of this particular religion. If you're looking at Muslims, you're looking specifically at Muslims. Uh, if you're looking at Christians, you're looking uh, particularly at Christians. Pres pres Presbyterians, you're looking at them, but also uh, the, the various religions under which you would want to do uh, that particular uh, categorization. So that is what we call categorical uh, population data. Uh, as, a, as, a, as an aspect uh, measurement of, of population. So uh, we want to also understand how population can be analyzed, population data can be analyzed. So having categorized data and how it can be measured, it is critical that you understand uh, how analyzing population data uh, is also done or how important it is. So population data Mr. can be Okay, let, let me let me just adjust here. It's not moving for everyone because I, I can see in my my aspect in my 
presentation here that they're, they're moving. Let me, let me, they're not moving. The slides are not moving. I'm on analyzing population data. <laughs> yes, yes, I can see the, the slide well. So, the slide, I continue yeah. if you're seeing the slide. It's it's not clear. It's now clear, clear. Before it was not moving, but now you are in that right place. Because by the time you click now, it appears in that location. But when you started from the first place, it wasn't moving. Uh, I think it's uh, the network is a little slow, so it takes time to to move to the next. So uh, we're, we're looking at we're looking at uh, how population data can be analyzed using descriptive statistics, and uh, we're saying data can be analyzed using descriptive statistics and uh, what we call inferential statistics. And uh, when we're talking about descriptive statistics, we are looking at summarizing the key characteristics of a population data set and the the, the measures. Uh, or the the, anali the the analyzing codes for descriptive statistics include a measure of the central tendency. And when we're talking about central tendencies, we're looking at the measures such as mean, median, and mode. mode. So these are, uh, these are measures that tell you where the data points are. Uh, for example, uh, if you wanted to look at uh, the, the the mean the mean age at at, at first sex of, of of females, you should be able to collect the the, the age uh, the, the the age group of all females uh, of reproductive age, and then uh, you're able to 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 line list it according to age, and then you're able to to line list which of the which of these. Uh, Females of, of reproductive age have have actively engaged in, in 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 sexual intercourse and at what age, and then that can help you uh, using the mean uh, to to identify uh, the the mean or the the median age at which uh, women in a particular country uh, have their first sexual intercourse, and those are some of the indicators that you you can help to to understand uh, the, the, the sexual behavior of uh, people in your, in your society. <clears throat> but also the, another measure uh, in descriptive statistics is dispersion. Uh, measures like variance and uh, standard deviation quantify how spread out uh, the data is. And we understand how variance works. So therefore, you, you, you are identifying uh, the variation of your data and then uh, using standard deviation, you're, you're, you're able to make analysis uh, of, 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 your key, uh, of your key indicator. So these are, these are how you, you can describe data and analyze data. Uh, you can also use frequency distributions, such as histograms and box plots, to show how often uh, different values appear in the data. Uh, for example, uh, if you wanted to do a descriptive uh, statistics of, of, of women uh, who are attending um, uh, antenatal care in your health facility, you can have a histogram uh, probably by month uh, just showing uh, how many women came in the first month, how many came in the third month, how many came in the fourth month, how many came in the fifth month, uh, just like that. But if you want to as well understand the trending, uh, the trends such as using the malaria channel, you, you're able to draw uh, trends for the previous year, and then you, you measure it against trends of the, of the current year. And all these are descriptive uh, statistics. Uh, so uh, 
uh, we, we, from descriptive statistics, you can use what we call a inferential statistics. And uh, this allows you to draw conclusions about the larger population based on the information obtained from a sample. And I think uh, when we are doing uh, uh, reproductive health uh, issues, I think we, 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 we tackled some of these uh, basic statistics uh, terms. So probably they are not uh, new terms to you as of now. However, uh, the two key uh, inferential statistics include hypothesis testing, where we formulate a null hypothesis uh, using the statistical tests and see if the data provides enough evidence uh, to reject it. So uh, for, 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 for those who have, uh, who have done uh, uh, their research, you, uh, you, you, you're supposed to state uh, a, 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 a null hypothesis and then prove, prove, prove your, your, your hypothesis through hypothesis testing. So, for example, uh, in, in your research question, uh, if, your, if your null hypothesis is that uh, uh, all, all, all women uh, who attend uh, antenatal care uh, uh, have, uh, have live babies or live births, then uh, through your research, you can be able to pro prove uh, whether antenatal care uh, or attendance of antenatal care is actually uh, uh, an automatic lead into having a live birth. And then you can be able to reject or, uh, 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 or sustain your, your hypothesis. And then we look at confidence intervals where there is estimating the range of plausible values for a population parameter uh, based on the sample. So the confidence intervals uh, are giving us uh, the odds or the, the values in which uh, particular characteristics lead to uh, certain outcomes. For example, uh, it is important uh, that you state uh, in, 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 in doing, in analyzing your population data, if you, you, were, if you wanted to subject uh, a particular health condition, let us use high blood pressure uh, to certain characteristics. Then, using confidence intervals, you are able to understand uh, whether, at a uh, at a confidence interval of 95%, uh, living in an urban area actually contributes to uh, high blood pressure among the community, or uh, having uh, no education or primary level education actually has. Uh, uh, an, uh, an, an, uh, an impact on someone's high blood pressure levels. So those are some of the, 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 the means in which you are able to use the confidence interval uh, to, to, to do data analysis. And we shall look at uh, uh, some of the case studies on how data analysis can be done. But also uh, in this particular uh, uh, module, uh, we shall expect that uh, each one of us downloads the, the data from uh, from uh, the demographic health program, and they are able to do analysis of uh, of that data and share with us, so that uh, they we understand the level at which you the the, the practical aspect of of what you you studying um, has reached. So. Uh, Having understood analysis, we also need to understand collection of population data. And uh, population data can be collected using the various methods, I think, which we have uh, definitely looked at. So this is just a brief of, of collection of population data. And we are saying these are uh, surveys, censuses, uh, experiments, but also administrative records. And we know how surveys are often conducted using the questionnaires and uh, so forth and all those other methods of data collection. So population data can be affected by various sources of error, such as sampling bias, uh, measurement error, non-response, or missing data. So then uh, we therefore want to understand uh, from that statement that uh, uh, it is mostly affected by various sources of error 
uh, we now want to understand some of the types and sources of error, uh, especially in population data. And uh, we're looking at four main uh, errors uh, or sources of error in population data. And uh, we're saying one, uh, we have classification errors, two, we have coverage errors, we have content errors, but also we have processing errors. And uh, when we're looking at uh, uh, these four um, uh, uh, errors, we want to understand from each of them uh, what they mean. And when you're talking about classification errors, we're saying these are errors that occur when an individual or events are placed in the wrong category or groups. Sometimes classification errors are called sampling errors. And uh, sampling areas, uh, the sources mainly of, of, of sampling errors uh, originate from misinterpretation of data. Two, amb ambiguity in classification cr criteria. So ambiguity means that uh, sometimes uh, you have a large uh, sampling area and therefore your sampling area uh, may not be uh, as clear as possible. For example, uh, you want to you want to sample uh, you want to sample men, but uh, you write it as male, and therefore uh, male or male or men or start from the age uh, of, of of zero to about the age of infinity or about one hundred and something for those who have a, who have a, a correct age uh, uh, expectation. So, so what happens is that it is very important that in your selection criteria, you, you make it less ambiguous. And therefore, you just state uh, that you want to understand, for example, you want to understand the, character, the demographic characteristics that are associated to uh, uptake of modern contraceptives among women of reproductive age. And when you're talking about women of reproductive age, we understand that it will be between the ages 15 to 49. And therefore, you are able to further ahead go and say women of reproductive age in this particular uh, area or in this particular county. So that is, that is uh, a, a sample that is clear uh, straight out. Uh, and therefore, there are categories uh, where you you may you may not uh, so particularly you will go to that county and look at women of reproductive age. Uh, so how errors occur is that people uh, are able individuals go and they are placed. For example, you interview a woman who is not of reproductive age, who is probably of the ages twelve or who is of the ages fifty. And, uh, and above. So that is where some of the classification errors come from. So an example is that there is assigning an individual uh, to the wrong group or to the wrong gender. So you may assign a man uh, to, to, to a female uh, gender. Secondly is what we call coverage errors. And coverage errors uh, are errors that result from the failure to include or exclude some units or events in the census enumeration. Coverage errors can be further divided into omissions, duplications, and erroneous inclusions or exclusions. Uh, they arise when certain groups or individuals are excluded or included incorrectly in the population data. So this may occur uh, during your enumeration. And, uh, you may include individuals who are not supposed to be uh, included. For example, uh, uh, in, the, in the national population census, uh, there is supposed to be a category for, for, for the non-national uh, enumeration and national enumeration. So you may realize that there are certain people who are not citizens of that particular country, but are uh, uh, because the census defines them in that country, they might be counted as uh, as nationals of that country. But also there are aspects of uh, people hiding information, and therefore you may include or exclude them erroneously uh, in a particular study. So uh, that is where the coverage errors come from. 
for some of the sources include uh, in complete data collection, but also we have sampling the bias. Uh, sampling bias is as a result of uh, uh, the enumerator or the individual who is conducting uh, uh, the particular study biasing or having uh, their own thoughts on the information that they are supposed to collect. So in sampling, whereas you may, you may develop a sampling model of random sam sampling, an individual may be biased and decides to go a particular village or to a particular place that rhymes with their uh, own, uh, own thoughts, ideas, but also their practices. So you may find it easier for a Muslim to go and do uh, an interview or to go and uh, perform enumeration at a, at, a, at a Muslim predominantly area or near a, a mosque uh, than them going uh, into a Christian predominant area or to a church uh, area. But also for traditionalists, you may as well find it very hard for them uh, to go to certain locations uh, because of the norms, uh, but also their practices and their thoughts and beliefs. Uh, therefore, this may cause uh, coverage errors. So, uh, thirdly, we have content errors. And when we are talking about content errors, uh, we are meaning that uh, these are errors that uh, result from the incorrect recording or reporting of the characteristics of the units or events in the census. And uh, content errors can be further divided into errors of geography, errors of classification, errors of measurement, and errors of processing. So when you're looking at a uh, content error, uh, as a result of geographical uh, distribution, you may, you may, when the issue of boundaries comes in, it is often very hard uh, for us to enumerate individuals. Because then uh, there are individuals who stay in the neighborhood of a, of a, of a, of a boundary whose families stay across uh, the next uh, area, then uh, they, they might be farming across the, uh, the two boundary areas. And therefore, sometimes errors occur in terms of classifying these individuals, but also in terms of measurement. Sometimes it is very hard uh, for individuals to measure. And measurement has errors regarding age and so forth. Some individuals may not be uh, very uh, comfortable mentioning their ages, but also they may not be aware uh, of their ages. And therefore, uh, having measurements of, of such age uh, become a little hard. And that is where we have content errors uh, that arise in population data. And, uh, and, and they stem from inaccuracies or inconsistencies in information collected. And most of the sources, like I've said earlier, they are as a result of respondent errors in surveys. So respondent errors, we are looking at how someone gives a response. The response may be inadequate or the response may be false. And therefore, this causes errors that we refer to as content error. Then they are also in incomplete or outdated records. And uh, these records may be administrative records uh, where these were written and uh, some part of the data was not captured. And therefore, this uh, uh, leads to guessing and uh, might be incorrect. And examples include uh, incorrect birth rates, uh, birth dates, misspelled names, and inaccurate uh, addresses. Someone may say that they live in this city, uh, yet they are living in a different uh, location. And uh, lastly, we want to look at processing errors. And uh, when we're discussing processing errors, we are talking about errors that occur during data entry, analysis, or transformation st stages. And this mostly occur as a result of human error uh, in data input, software, or system glitches. And some of the examples, and some of the examples of uh, of these include miscalculations during edge computation or database corruption. So we very well know that sometimes uh, when we're doing data entry, uh, as a result of uh, large or bulk data, uh, there are some errors that may occur. 
And uh, these are some of the errors that occur uh, during processing of data. And therefore, uh, some softwares as well might crash, uh, leaving us with processing errors. So processing means these are, these are data that are now being transferred from uh, their hard copies into uh, a, a, an electronic version of the data. And as a result, we experience uh, these errors. So those are the four main uh, errors that might be uh, associated with population data. However, uh, we want to understand, uh, having understood uh, the, the types of errors that might occur in population data, we want to as well understand the importance of addressing these errors. And uh, the importance of correcting these errors is very crucial uh, to ensure the reliability of data. Remember from our research, uh, the principle is that research must be reliable. And therefore, if you're able to correct these errors, uh, you're able to make your research as reliable as possible. Uh, another importance for uh, addressing these errors is that they can lead to inaccurate uh, policy decisions, uh, resource allocation, and planning. So if these errors are not, uh, are not corrected, uh, the policymakers may be basing on these errors, and uh, it may be unfortunate that they make decisions and allocate resources where there is no need. And this is a very uh, important aspect of uh, uh, addressing errors. Uh, say, for example, uh, they, they may allocate uh, delivery beds to a, whole, to a health facility uh, whose catchment population has less uh, female or women of reproductive age. Whereas uh, a, a, a health facility that is located in an area that has uh, uh, a, a high population of women of reproductive age may not be allocated delivery beds, may not be allocated maternity ward, may not be allocated uh, those uh, coaches uh, that might be needed or that could be very important for that particular population. So that is how those uh, errors may lead to such uh, in a, in appropriate decision making. So uh, what are the strategies for I don't know what I know, but the screen is not seen again. I don't see any slides. <laughs> What happened? I'm <laughs> 
Yes, uh, what is going on? I'm, I'm not getting any information. Thank mm -hmm. you. 